Hey everyone, you're here sewing with Cody and Pete, and this is a different type of video. I get a lot of questions um, about all the machines, and I'm always trying to find new ways to help customers out, answer some questions. Um, so with this video, we're still working on the 570, because I still have it in the studio, and I just want to go over a few of my favorite things about the Bernina 570. So this video is titled, top, My Top 5 Favorite Things about the Bernina 570 Quilters Edition machine. So number one has got to be the Jumbo Bobbin. And this is now found on the majority of our Bernina machines, but the 570 has, is one of those many Bernina machines that has that nice big Jumbo Bobbin. Um, and all the machines have it because it's such a wonderful thing. Um, so the Bernina B9 hook is what it is referred to as, but it's a jumbo bobbin. This holds a lot more thread. It's about 70% more thread than your average uh, bobbin. And so with that, so with all of our Bernina machines, they're all front-loading bobbins, with, which adds so much benefit, including strength and easy maneuverability. When we're sewing, we've got a project up here, or quilting, or especially when we're embroidering, we can easily access our bobbin. So with that jumbo bobbin, it's just right there, front-loading, easy to take out, and easy to put back in. And with the 570, we can easily click on our little bobbin down here, a little bobbin picture and it'll give us a video of how to put that bobbin into our bobbin case super super simple and with the Bernina machines we have three different bobbin cases for the 570 in particular we have the black bobbin case which is our standard sewing bobbin case um, that comes with the 570 and you can do everything with this um, but Bernina does have a gold or yellow bobbin case, which is a high tension bobbin case, and that allows for uh, better free motion quilting and better embroidery. Um, then there's also the red bobbin case. That's, that's a lot of fun. There'll be some videos in the future working with that red bobbin case. The red bobbin case is our thread play bobbin case. So that bobbin case doesn't have any tension on it really at all. Um, so it allows for a much thicker thread to flow through uh, the bobbin case and uh, the machine without having any tension on it. So that's one of my top favorite things about the Bernina 570 is its jumbo bobbin. The next thing has to be the dual feed. So the 570 is the first Bernina in the entire series uh, like as you're working your way up into the machine lineup that has the built-in dual feed. That's a question I get a lot is so I'm looking they're looking for a machine that has a built-in dual feed um, or basically kind of like a built-in walking foot and the 570 is the first one that offers that and the 590, the 770, the 740, 790 all of those have it as well but the 570 is where it begins. So with the Bernina built-in dual feed, we can see here, we can take off our 1D foot and we can see it here. So right here, it slides from the top of the machine down and it gives us traction. Basically, it gives us feed dogs on the top of our fabric. So it sandwiches everything and allows it to pull multiple layers of fabric through the machine evenly. So with our Bernina dual feed, and which sets it apart from other brands and other machines, is we have about 11 different feet that can accommodate using that built-in dual feed. Everything from number one, your everyday sewing foot, from your zipper foot, from your quarter inch foot, like your 97D, you've got jeans foot, feet, um, you've got an edge stitch foot, all of those can accommodate that dual feed. Um, but the next best thing about the Bernina dual feed is when you do disengage it, which you just kind of pinch it, pull it straight down, and let it glide up, is when it's up and dis disengaged, it's completely out of the way. As you can see, you don't even see it. It's completely tucked up behind the machine. And what that does, it's just no longer in your way. So there are some brands or some machines like our Burnett B series, for instance, our B70 series, that has a similar Burnett dual feed. 
uh, the problem with its dual feed is it cannot accommodate a walking foot because the dual feet hangs down just enough that's kind of in the way well actually it is in the way of a walking foot but with the Bernina dual feet like on the 570 it's completely tucked away and out of the way one thing to remember when you are using the Bernina dual feed that you must be using a foot with the letter D which stands for dual feed um, and you must have that dual feed engaged when you are working with a foot that is a D foot. So we easily just put the foot on and we just slide that dual feed down and of course make sure your foot is all the way up so that dual feed just glides easy into the foot. So here we are behind the machine because I want to show you how the Bernina dual feed engages and disengages from a different angle. So here, like I showed, this is a uh, D foot represented by the D. So these are the only feet that you can use with the dual feet because it has a cutout back here. So once we put the foot on, so we've got the foot on. So here we've got the cutout, you can see it here. So what you can do, you can just make sure, of course, make sure the foot's in the up position. And we can just slide that dual feed right into that, just like that. So now to disengage or to take off the dual feed, we always still want to make sure that the foot's up, basically so you can fit your finger underneath there. And so we're going to squeeze here. There's really no need to, like there's no pressure involved, but we're just kind of squeeze and we're going to pull straight down. So we're going to basically pull down here, pull down to the base of the machine. So we pull down just a little bit and then we'll just help it slide up. Okay. Naturally it's spring loaded and wants to bounce up, but that's, it's as simple as that to engage and disengage the Bernina uh, dual feed. So to engage it, just push it down. To disengage it, just help it slide back up. Super, super simple. But the trick is to disengage it is to kind of give it a slight pull down and then help it up. The next wonderful feature that we have to absolutely love about the Brina 570, that's its pivot and hover function. And there's more to it than just pivoting and hovering. So let me slide on the free arm table. So we've got some fabric, just a scrap piece of fabric. So there's more to it than just hover, and we'll go over what I'm referring to, the hover feature. So right now with the Bernina 570, there's no lever in the back to lower the foot. Only thing in the back here is our dual feed. So what this does is, so now since we have a lever, we can drop our foot electronically. So we can either hit the button to drop the foot, or we can, we can push on our foot pedal. So when I push on my foot pedal, the foot drops, and then it'll start stitching. It'll start stitching whatever we want. Um, but as we can see here is I have my needle stopping in the down position. So easily changed here. So when I have my needle stop in the down position, when I stop, the foot then pops up and hovers above the fabric. So now I can easily pivot, start stitching again, and whenever I stop, the foot hovers and allows me to pivot. So that's the hover function. So it's not necessarily just it hovering, but it's the fact that it, the foot pedal is controlled electronically with the button or your foot pedal and not a, a manual lever in the back. But what's nice about the hover feature is as you see when we stop sewing, and the foot pops up and hovers, it's just a little bit of a hover, which is perfectly fine for our everyday cotton fabric or even polyester, but a thinner fabric. But what if you're working with a fur or fleece or a uh, velvet or something that's thicker? This hover wouldn't be enough to do anything. The beauty of the Bernina hover is we can adjust the height that the machine hovers, and that's easy. So we'll go to the house, we'll go to our settings, We'll go to our sewing settings and we'll go to our functional settings. Basically these represent the buttons and everything. And our hover is found right here with the needle down. So here you have the option of no hover when the needle stops down. You have the option of a little bit of a hover when the needle stops down and that's what it's set on now. Or you have the option of a lot of hover. Basically all the way up when the needle stops down. So we select it, we'll exit out. So now, as you can see, it automatically jumped to it. 
So whenever we stop sewing, the needle stops down and the foot really hovers. Basically, it, almost as high as it could go with the needle in the down position safely. So this will give you plenty of room for some fleece, um, some velvet, anything that has a, a bulk to it. So that's a programmable hover, which the 570 does have, which is wonderful. So you can still use your freehand system, that knee lift, but the hover, it does it all by itself. It's wonderful. And also, when you press the thread cutter, it will cut the thread and raise the foot completely up and out of the way and ready for you to start moving somewhere else. So you know, there's no lever you have to press. So the next thing on my list of top five favorite things about the Bernina 570 is the foot recognition. This is a fantastic feature. And the Bernina 480 has this, but the 570 takes it to another level. So what I love so much about the Bernina foot recognition is you can put on a foot that may have a restriction and because Bernina doesn't have snap-on soles, they actually use a full shank metal foot, um, it allows for a code to be placed at the top of the foot and it can tell the machine what foot is on it essentially. Um, so if you have a foot that has restrictions like the 97D which is a straight stitch foot only, it will take, a if we have a decorative stitch or in this case if we have a zigzag selected, it will then restrict that stitch to accommodate the restrictions on this foot. It's a wonderful feature. It goes beyond that as well. So right now, I have the 1D foot on. So this foot allows for any, pretty much any stitch um, because it doesn't have any restrictions. So I can change stitches. I can go and adjust the stitch however I want. So if I want one of the flowers and I go to this big flower, it's the max at the nine millimeter stitch width, and I can change the length and do whatever I want. As soon as I ch take that foot, and I change it for a different foot, like a five and a half millimeter stitch width foot, like this number six. So as soon as I disengage the dual feed, take the foot off, and when I have this foot on, it then will change my stitch to only a five and a half millimeter stitch width stitch, because this foot's only capable of that. And so if we look, and I've got videos going over these types of feet, but if we look at this foot, so it's five and a half millimeters, it just has a number, it doesn't have a C that stands for code, it doesn't have a D that stands for dual feed, so, and there's nothing here. It's just a plain, regular Bernina full shank foot. So when we put one of these feet on, or if we have no feet on, the machine defaults to a five and a half millimeter stitch width. But as soon as we put on a foot that's nine millimeter um, or a, and or a dual feed function, it then tells the machine that it's a dual feed foot so it can use the dual feed and that it's a nine millimeter. It's capable of nine millimeters. So but if we look at the 9070, which is one of my most used feet, the 970 can really only accommodate a straight stitch with a little zigzag, but it can use the dual feed. So as soon as I put this foot on, I want you to pay attention to the screen because it will be finished before I have the foot on, is it basically, it takes that stitch and essentially makes it a straight stitch. So it puts its full restrictions and that foot allows for a little bit of a, a wiggle to give you kind of a scant quarter inch if you wanted to. Um, but it's basically a straight stitch because that's all it's capable of doing. And then it accommodates the dual feed so we want to engage that dual feed. But if we had a foot on that wasn't a dual feed foot and we engaged a dual feed, we'd have problems. So these codes tell the machine what the foot is fully capable of. So like I said, we can take it a step further. So I'll take this foot off just so you can see, see the change. And let's say we put on like a uh, embroidery foot, like a number 26 embroidery foot, which really only accommodates a straight stitch as well. So we put this foot on. We can go and tell the machine exactly what foot we have on the machine. So we can come here. So right now it's showing the 1C. So if I click on this, I can go and I can come to the little magnifying lens, the little search, and I can say, okay, I have the number 26 foot on, and there it is right there. I can select it 
and when I exit out of the screen, it does the same thing. So here we put on a foot that does not have a code on it, so the machine can't recognize it. Um, but we can tell it exactly what foot we have on, and then it will put those restrictions into place. This is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful feature. Um, so remember, so if you don't have a foot that it can't recognize automatically, you can still go in there and tell it exactly what foot, and it'll put those restrictions in. So if you're working with a zipper foot, for instance, let's go and select the zipper foot, which is number four. So here's like a number four, it's a regular number four. It won't allow us to even do a straight stitch. As we can see, the stitch is red on the screen, and that's because even a straight stitch we can't use on a number four zipper foot because we need to move the needle over, and when we move it over to the right position, you'll see that stitch turn white. And that white stitch means we can sew in that needle position with that foot. So this is a wonderful feature. Uh, it really prevents you from breaking or hurting anything because um, you can tell the machine or the machine recognizes all, all by itself. There's so many favorite things, but I wanted to limit this video to just five. So my next favorite thing is the thread away mode in embroidery. So it requires us to go to the embroidery. So I've got the module right here. So I'll just show you how easy it is to do. So with the Brina 5 series module, we can just slide it on. And we, of course, we can use our slide on table. So we just slide it on. We'll go to the little house. We'll select the embroidery. It's going to tell us to lower our feed dogs around the side. Super simple. And then now we're on the embroidery side. So let me just choose an alphabet. Just something real simple. Let's do A, B, C. So we have our design on the screen. Then we go and play with a few little things. We'll just space these guys out just so you can really see what we're working with. So we have our ABC. And one thing I want you to pay attention to is I want you to notice on the screen right off the bat is it doesn't show any jump stitches. There's no jump stitches. Because what it does is it'll stitch out the A, stop, cut the thread, the hoop will move, and then it'll go and stitch out the B. Stitch out the B, stop, cut the thread, the hoop will move. And every time it's moving the hoop, it's pulling that tail out. And it eliminates our jump stitches from the A to the B, from the B to the C. Now what I want to what I'm going to go over before we actually start stitching is I'm going to show you how we change that and to make sure that your 570 or 590 is set up to do this if you want to do this. So let's go to our settings. So to do that, we'll go to the house, we'll go to the gears, and we'll go to our embroidery settings. So here we have a number of options. So one, you can tell the machine if you want it to read in inches or millimeters. Um, you can tell it, okay, I want it to ch cut my stitches. Either stitches between colors, have it stop in the beginning after those five stitches to cut that tail. But one thing we have here is our jump stitch cutter. So here we can go as far down as one millimeter apart. So just as long as your two designs are at least one millimeter apart, it will cut those jump stitches. And you can tell it. So we brought it down to one millimeter. The next thing is we want to make sure our thread away mode is on. That's this one right here. It is on. Perfect. So we can exit out of here, go back to embroidery. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to tell it, I want to start stitching. So one thing I want you to take note is we're on the medium hoop. But once you put the bigger hoop on, it will recognize all of that. So let's go do that. So before we put the hoop on, we're going to hit the little needle to go to the embroidery side. I must not have it quite on. Oh, sure sure don't. There we go. So take the hoop off. So it will the machine and the module will calibrate. So now let's rethread. So here we have the machine threaded. We've got deco bob and the bobbin. We'll let's move our design up a little bit. So now we can. Put the hoop on. Let's 
so now watch as it stitches and you'll see how the thread away mode works. So you just press and hold the green button. So you saw there how after the letter A, it stopped, it cut the thread, and then the hoop moved over in a direction, and it pulled out that top thread. And then it moved over to the B, which is what it was its next design, and it started stitching. And because that tail was cut nice and short, but long enough to catch, it was able to pull it to the back, because we really don't care how the back looks for the most part, and started stitching the B. And now there's no jump stitch between the A and the B. And of course, it will do the same exact thing between the B and the C. So there you have it. That's the Bernina thread away mode and like jump stitch cutter. So as you can see, there's no jump stitches. They're all gone. So they're in the back. So we've got a little tails here. You can go and trim those up if you want, but that's it. So that's my fifth favorite thing about the Bernina 570. But like I said, there's so many different things, uh, but I just had to pick five. Some other little quick things is the free arm. It's always available. Easy to put on and take off the slide on table when you're in embroidery. Um, full speed control, the Bernina stitch regulator, total stitch control, you can change whatever stitch you want. Separate motors for the bobbin winder in the machine. Um, you can easily take off the front cover to get and clean any lint in here. The automatic thread cutters, the bobbin sensors, it's just the list goes on and on with some of my favorite features of all the Berninas. There will be a video that kind of go over a large uh, amount of my favorite things of why I love my Bernina machines. Um, that will come in the future. But I just wanted to show and highlight five things that we use all the time and we just absolutely love with the 570. So I hope you enjoyed give the video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos happy sewing